U.S. Citizenship Interview and Tips. If you are looking for a full practice for your citizenship interview, then this video is for you. You will listen to a complete simulated U.S. citizenship interview between a U.S. CIS officer and an applicant for naturalization just like you. The interview will cover questions related to your Form N-400. Then we will go over the civics test, reading test, and writing test. The great thing about this video is that we will give you many important tips throughout this interview to help you better prepare for your own interview and know what to expect. Be sure to watch the video until the end to get the information you certainly will need. We hope that you're ready to learn. Let's get started. Is Mr. Michael Kwame Asamoah here? Yes, I'm here. Hi, I am Officer Michelle Carpenter, and I will be conducting your naturalization interview today. Hi. Did I pronounce your name correctly? You did better than many people. It is Kwame Asamoa. For how long have you been waiting here? Not very long. I think for about 20 minutes. Great. Please follow me to office room number 243, just at the end of this hallway. Okay. We will come back to the interview in a short moment. But first, we're going to give you a very important information you must know. Tip number one. When you receive a letter in the mail with an appointment for your naturalization interview, the letter will include the time your interview is scheduled, the address of your local USCIS office where you will have your interview, and the documents you need to bring with you to your interview. We encourage you to arrive to your appointment 15 minutes early. You must bring your appointment notice with you to the interview, along with your permanent resident card, all valid and expired passports, and a state-issued identification card, such as a driver's license. There are other documents that you should bring to your interview to avoid any delay in processing your application, including evidence of your current marital status, such as a marriage certificate, divorce or annulment decree, or the death certificate of a former spouse. If you've changed your name, bring evidence of the name change, such as a copy of marriage documents or court decree changing your name. If your spouse was previously married, bring evidence that your spouse's prior marriage was terminated. If you have been arrested or detained by the police at any time, bring original or certified copies of court dispositions. If you are a man between 18 and 31 years old, you need to provide proof that you've registered with the Selective Service. Now, let's get back to the interview. Please come inside the office. Feel free to place your bag next to the chair. But before the interview begins, I must place you under oath, so please remain standing. Okay. Please raise your right hand. Do you swear or affirm that the statements you will give today will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. Please take a seat. Thank you. Do you know what an oath means? Yes, I do. It means I agree that everything I say today during this interview is the truth. Tell me why you are here today. I am here for my naturalization interview. I want to become a United States citizen. What are your reasons for wanting to become a U.S. citizen? First of all, I love this country. I want to participate in its democracy by voting. And I want to be able to bring my family here in the United States. I need to see your lawful permanent resident card, all of your passports, and any type of state issue identification, please. Here are my green card, my passports, 
and my driver's license. Thank you. You're welcome. What is your current legal name? Michael Kwame Asamoa. Have you used any other names, including nicknames or aliases? No, I have not. By law, you can legally change your name when you become a citizen. Do you want to legally change your name? Yes, indeed. I want to legally change my name. Okay, one moment. What new legal name would you like to use, if approved? Here, I wrote it on this piece of paper. Basically, I want to use Asamoa as my middle name. So, my first name would be Michael, my middle name Asamoa, and my last name Kwame. I don't want to use any more the hyphenated last name Kwame Asamoa. Okay, let me make some changes here in your application. Do you understand that if your petition for a name change is approved, and also if your application for naturalization is approved, then you can only take part to an oath ceremony presided over by a judge, not a USCIS officer? Yes. This interview will continue in a moment. Tip number two. A large part of the naturalization interview involves reviewing the Form N-400, Application for Naturalization, asking you questions about the information you provided on the application, and reviewing the documents you submitted to support your application. When the officer reviews Form N-400 with you, the officer is also testing your ability to speak and understand the English language, which is one of the requirements for naturalization. If you do not understand something, you should ask the officer to repeat the question or explain the question using other words. Let's go back to the interview. What is your social security number? My social security number is one two three four five six seven eight nine. What is your date of birth? August eight. 1981. And where were you born, city and country? I was born in Accra, Ghana. Are you a citizen of Ghana? Yes. Are either of your parents United States citizens? No. When did you become a lawful permanent resident of the U.S.? July 1st, 2012. What is your current home address? My address is 2459 Salem Avenue in Atlanta, Georgia. When did you move to this address? I moved there on November 23rd. 2012. And before that, you were living in Florida, is that correct? Yes, Jacksonville, Florida. What is your daytime phone number? My phone number is, actually, this is my cell phone number. It is 770-123-4500. Six, seven. Where do you work? I work at a company called Software Solutions. When did you start working there? December 1st, 2012. What is your current job title? I am a software developer. What does your job consist of? Uh, I write computer programs 
to help our clients better run their businesses. On your application, you wrote that you have made two trips outside of the United States since you became a permanent resident. Is that correct? Uh, actually, it is not correct. I traveled to Germany two months ago, so that makes it a total of three trips. So you traveled to Germany after you applied for naturalization? Yes, that is correct. And how long was your trip? It was for two weeks total. What was the purpose of that trip? My company sent me to attend a conference and then I decided to stay there for a few additional days to pay a visit to a friend whom I hadn't seen in a long time. What date did you leave for Germany and what date did you come back to the United States? I left on March 3rd and came back on March 19th of this year. I see that the other two trips you took were to Ghana. What was the purpose of those trips? I visited my family and relatives there. Were any of those trips to Ghana longer than six months? No. What is your marital status? I am single. I have never been married. Do you have any children? Yes. I have a five-year-old daughter. Does she live with you? No, she doesn't. She lives with her mother in Florida. Where was your daughter born? In Tallahassee, Florida. How have you been supporting her? I have been wiring money to her mother every month. I have an affidavit from her mother certifying that I have been supporting our daughter. May I see it? Sure. Do you have any other children? No. This interview will continue shortly. Tip number three. The officer will continue to ask you questions from the Form N-400 to verify the information you've provided and determine your eligibility for naturalization. The officer may also ask to provide additional information to the answers provided in the application. As a reminder, always review your Form N-400 before your interview. For example, some of the questions that the officer might ask you may cover trips outside the United States, particularly any trips after the application was submitted, past marriages, memberships in any organizations, problems with the law, criminal history, and or jail time, military service in the United States, and support of the U.S. Constitution and allegiance to the United States. Your answer to these and other questions determine your eligibility for naturalization. Remember to bring supporting documents that can help you address any of these questions. You must always be honest in your responses because lying to an immigration officer during a naturalization interview may make you ineligible for naturalization. At the end of the questions, the officer will ask you to sign a series of documents. Now, let's go back to the interview. Now let's go over the next section of your N-400 form. Okay. Have you ever claimed to be a U.S. citizen? No. Have you ever failed to file a tax return? No. Have you ever been arrested, cited, or detained by any law enforcement officer for any reason? No. Do you know the meaning of crime? 
Yes, it is an action that is against the law and the government can punish somebody for doing that. Have you ever been convicted of a crime or offense? No. Have you ever been a member of or associated with any organization, association, fund foundation, party, club, or similar group in the United States or in any other location in the world? Yes. Which group did you or do you belong to? Software Developers of America. What is the purpose of this group? It is a professional organization. Do you or did you belong to any other groups? No. Have you ever lied to or hidden information from a U.S. immigration or police officer when you filed papers to immigrate or when you filed papers to be able to stay in the U.S.? No. Do you support the Constitution and form of government of the United States? Yes. Are you willing to take the full oath of allegiance to the United States? Yes. If the law requires it, are you willing to perform work of national importance under civilian direction? Yes. Okay. Please print your name at the bottom of this page and sign your name next to it. Okay. I will need you to sign your application here. Sure. Please review this form and let me know if it is correct. Okay. It's correct. Great. Then print your name here and sign here. Thank you. You're welcome. From your responses to the questions so far in the interview, I've come to the conclusion that you speak and understand English well enough to pass the speaking portion of the naturalization test. This interview will continue in a moment. Tip number four. The next part of this video will show a sample of the naturalization test, beginning with the civics test and ending with the reading and writing tests. In some cases, immigration officers may choose to begin with the reading and writing tests. The civics, reading, and writing tests. In most cases, after reviewing your Form N-400, the officer will give you the remaining portions of the naturalization test, the U.S. History and Civics test, the English Reading test, and the English Writing test. In some U.S. CIS offices, the naturalization test may be given before your interview by an Immigration Services officer. The U.S. History and Civics test has 10 questions. The History and Civics questions will be asked orally and answered orally. You must get six out of the 10 questions correct to pass the history and civics test. Now, let's get back to the interview. Now we are going to go over the civics test. Are you ready? Um, I think I am. I have studied a great deal. How many amendments does the Constitution have? 27. Who wrote the Declaration of Independence? Um, um, I, I, I don't remember. That is okay. Who does a U.S. Senator represent? All people of the state. Name one war fought by the United States in the 1900s. Vietnam War. Name one U.S. territory. Hawaii. What territory did the United States buy from France in 1803? 
Uh, Louisiana. What is the supreme law of the land? Please, can you repeat that? Sure. What is the supreme law of the land? The Constitution. Who did the United States fight in World War II? Japan, Germany, and Italy. Great! I asked you eight questions and you got two questions wrong. For the question regarding a U.S. territory, your answer was Hawaii. Hawaii is a state. You could have said, for example, American Samoa, the Northern Mariana Islands, the U.S. Virgin Islands, Guam, or Puerto Rico. For the name of the person who wrote the Declaration of Independence, the answer is Thomas Jefferson. Since you answered six questions correctly, that means you have passed the civics test. This interview will continue in a moment. Tip number five. Please note that the officer will stop asking you questions once you've answered six questions correctly. Now we will show a simulation situation of the English reading and writing tests being given to the applicant. The reading and writing test each have three sentences. You only need to get one reading and one writing sentence correct to pass. Okay, let's go back to the interview. Now let's go over the reading and writing test. Please read this sentence out loud for me. Who was the first president? Good. Now on the first line of this paper, I need you to write the following sentence. Washington was the first president of the United States. Washington was the first president of the United States. Okay, let's try another one. On the second line, please write, people want to vote. People want to vote. Good. Congratulations. You have passed the reading and writing test. This form is for you to keep. Thank you, officer. You're welcome. I'm recommending your application for approval. If my recommendation is accepted, you will be sent a notice in the mail of when to come in for your naturalization ceremony. Do you have any questions at this point? Yes, I have a question. Do you know how long I have to wait for my oath ceremony? If my recommendation of approval is accepted, in the next few weeks you will receive a letter with all the information. And since you requested a name change, you are required to attend only an oath ceremony presided over by a judge. Thank you. You're welcome. Do you have any other concerns? Uh, no, no. That's the only question I had. Great. I will escort you to the customer service area. Thank you. Thank you very much. Tip number six. The oath ceremony is the final step in becoming a U.S. citizen. After the approval of your Form N-400, you'll be scheduled for an oath ceremony to take the Oath of Allegiance. At the ceremony, your lawful permanent resident card will be taken by USCIS and you will be given a certificate of naturalization. Some USCIS offices may schedule you to participate in a ceremony of the same day of the interview. After your oath ceremony, you are officially a U.S. citizen and have all the rights and responsibilities that come with this privilege. We wish you the very best on your citizenship interview. Thank you for watching this video. Please like and share it with your friends and family.